I'm back at the Gillum cabin, and we have had rain, rain, rain. We have had over 10 inches in the last week, and I'm back to wading mud again, and it's really sloppy around here. I've started putting the uh, floor down on the porch. These are uh, one by six oak, and I'm screwing them down with torque screws. I didn't get full length on all of my boards, but I've got enough. Uh, they're they're all they were all cut in two foot increments, so and my joists are on two foot centers, so I can make everything work. I just have to where I don't have a full length board as this one here is. I will have to uh, make one butt joint, and I'm having to wedge some of these together. Got a little bit of a bow to them, and these are are butted up tight. These these boards are green. They were cut just a few days ago. They are going to dry and shrink. As they do, they will open up a a gap right here to let moisture, to let rainwater go on through. And after this is on here and it dries for several days, I will put the boiled linseed oil on it to help preserve it. All of these joists have been treated with boiled linseed oil and the uh, girder, the 8x8, treated with boiled linseed oil. Now I had to put in an extra support block right here. This is going to be for the center post that holds up the, the porch beam will rest and I, I needed something solid underneath the, the boards. I didn't just want to set that post on top of them without anything under it. So I cut another little bit bigger piece of wood and bolted it down to the girder. So when I set the post up, it'll have something solid which will transfer the weight all the way down to the piers. Well, we didn't get done today. I didn't get started until pretty late and fought the rain all morning and part of this afternoon. But we've got to start on it, and in the morning I'll be able to finish it up. Some of these boards are a little bit thicker than others, and I've been kind of working against that, trying to get them to where they're fairly close. Rough sawed lumber, you have that to deal with, even with a band sawed mill, that sometimes will happen. But I think overall, when this is dried out, that it'll be okay, and it'll look good. I've got a little bit of a discrepancy all the way down through there. The cabin itself is not completely straight, so I've got a little bit of a challenge to make all this come together. It's a little bit wider at this end than it is down at the other end. So I've got to do some figuring, see if I can make all this come together. Uh, let's see if we can get this finished up.
got three of the four porch posts cut. I just have to hew them. You can look and see there's a white center line down it, and that's on all four sides. And I'll show you how I do that. See it there? Uh, I snap center lines on there so that I can work from the center line and get a square cut. The post could be a little bit bowed or whatever, but yet the two ends will be parallel with each other. So they'll fit good on the floor and up against the beam at the top. Basically, I work this just like a wall log. I've got a wedge under there to raise it so that it can pivot. And I've got a wedge there. And I just lay my, my level across here and get it level in the center. And here on the end, came up half the, the width of it. And from here to here, half of it. And I, I put a plumb line mark there and a level mark here. And I'll be able to connect all these, these points right here with a chalk line. I, I did the same thing at the other end. And I could snap white lines on this and I can lay my square on those uh, center lines and lay out a, a good square cut on the end. Okay, I've drawn a mark across here using my square on the white center line and I'll roll this over and I'll transfer this line down both sides here and on, on the bottom I'll just have to connect it together. And it should be pretty close to square. I'm lining my square up right with that first mark that I made. And that'll be the mark that I work from to get all the sides. It's kind of hard to see a mark on this cedar because it's so dark. On this last side, I'll just take my little square, line that up, get a mark on there. Now I'm going to score these lines, all of them, all the way around, because I'll be cutting this with a chainsaw. I don't want it to splinter out on me. I'm going to score that with my knife. I found that this red cedar will splinter. I'll make four cuts with my saw, my chainsaw. Let's come over here about halfway and then come down about halfway and just roll it until I get it all cut off of there. I can take my slick or work a good sharp chisel and just clean this area here right up down to the line. Check it. 
with my little straight edge square. A little bit of an undercut right here in the middle. I'm in pretty good shape with that. The reason I'm using a foot ad is because the grain changes so often, or especially around a knot. And I can go from this direction or this direction or come back around or, or work it around a knot, which I couldn't do with a broad axe with it being up on horses. I'd just be going straight down with the cutting tool. But with the foot ads, I can work the grain. I can chase it around and uh, hit with the foot ads. And I just rest my forearm. I'm right handed the left. I put my left forearm up there and that kind of helps me gauge how deep that I'm cutting. I'm just taking a teeny tiny bit off, just enough to remove the saw marks off of this. I'm not swinging very hard. The tool's pretty sharp. And I'm not swinging hard enough to where I'll glance back into my leg. Just a real, real thin shaving. And I'm not getting in any big hurry. Because that's when you get hurt. I'm being very careful. I have full control of this foot ass. By coming across the grain like this, it looks more like it's been hewed with a broad axe. I've hewed a lot of log faces, which is actually just a board, inch, inch and a quarter thick, where I had to replace the face on a log. And I would hew it with a foot adze. And I would hew across the grain, and it would look like it was done with the, with a the broad axe to match what I was working on. Now you can see them up close to a knot, but I can work this around that knot. Actually, there's several knots there. And I may have to actually hew from the other side to make the grain work in my favor. Yeah, it went across that knot clean by coming from the other direction. If I had hewed from this way, it would just pull chunks out. This this uh, red cedar is kind of brittle, although it's a it's a real pretty wood. You can see the reds in it. It's got a really nice smell. following the grain around. <laughs> 